could talk about Henry Singleton's uh, Teledyne and whether you learned lessons from that, used it as a model, and what you think about how it ultimately unwound and how you might want Berkshire to uh, continue differently. Yeah, that's a very good question. And Charlie knew Henry Singleton. I, I knew a lot about him. I mean, I studied him very carefully, but Charlie knew him personally and as well as studying him. So I'm going to let Charlie answer that. But there's a lot to be learned from both what Singleton did uh, in his operating years and then what happened subsequently. Henry Singleton was very interesting. <clears throat> he was a lot smarter than either Warren or I. Henry was the kind of guy that always got 800 on every test and left early. And he could play chess blindfolded, <clears throat> just below the grandmaster level when he was an old man. <clears throat> that said, I watched him invest and I watched Warren invest and Warren did a lot better. He just worked at it. Henry was thinking about inertial gu guidance and Warren was thinking about securities and the, the extra work enabled Warren to get by with his horrible, horrible deficit of IQ compared to Henry. <laughs> and, and the interesting let's, thing let's, about, let's not quantify it. No. <laughs> the interesting thing about Singleton is he had very clever incentives on all the key executives. And they were tough and they were important and they were meaningful. And in the end, he had three different defense departments that got into scandals. He wasn't doing anything wrong. He wasn't tr trying to hurt the Defense Department on purpose. But the incentives got so strong and the culture of performance got so strong that people actually went too far in dealing with the, uh, the, gov the government. Teledyne did. And so we haven't had any trouble like that that I know of. Can you think of any, Warren? No, and, and Charlie and I, we really believe in the power of incentives, and and there's these hidden incentives that we try to avoid. One, we have seen, both of us, more than once, really decent people misbehave because they felt that there was a loyalty to their CEO to present certain number to deliver certain numbers because the CEO went out and made a lot of forecasts about what the company would earn. And if you if you go and say, if, if I were to say that Berkshire is going to earn X per share next year, and we have a bunch of executives in the insurance business that set loss reserves and do all kinds of things, or or companies in other areas that can that can uh, load up uh, channels at the end of quarters, at the end of years. I've just seen I've seen a lot of misbehavior that actually doesn't profit anybody financially, but it's it's been done merely because they don't want to make the CEO look bad in terms of his forecast, or he's done it because he doesn't want to look. If, when they get their ego involved, people do things that they shouldn't do, and so we we try to eliminate incentives that would cause people to to misbehave not only for financial rewards but for you know ego satisfaction and i think that's probably pretty unusual to even be considering that in the business but we've seen enough so we do consider it i might also report that at the end henry wanted to sell his business to berkshire for stock so he was very smart of him <laughs> right to the very, very end we had a case at National, this is, it's, it's interesting, it, you really have to understand, should understand human behavior and if you're going to run a business, because when National Indemnity, we're going back to the late 1960s, uh, Jack Ringwalt was a marvelous man, he ran it, and he had another marvelous man who worked for him as his tennis partner, and that fellow was in charge of claims, and when the claims man would come into Jack and say, I just received a claim for $25,000 or something for some long haul truck or something. Jack would say, Jack, it was just his personality. He would start berating the fellow and saying, you know, how can you do this to me? And these claims are killing me and all of that. And he was joking. But the fellow he was joking with couldn't take it really. And he started hiding claims. 
and he just didn't, he stuck them in a drawer. And that caused us to, to not only misreport fairly minor figures, but, but it also caused us to misinform our reinsurers because they had an interest in the size of claims. And the fellow that was, was hiding the claims had no financial interest in doing it at all, but he just didn't like to walk into the office and have Jack kid him about, about the fact that he was failing him. And you really have to be very careful in the messages you send as a CEO. Uh, and if you, tell your, if you tell your managers you never wanted to disappoint Wall Street and you want to report X per share, you may find that they, they start fudging figures to protect your, your predictions. And we try, to, we try to avoid all that kind of behavior.